Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Peace! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available tomorrow, the album, Dad, Shimmy Shimmy Air. <clears throat> You've got the moves, baby. I've got the motion. If we got together, we'd be causing a commotion. Beast! How are you guys doing today? <laughs> oh my god, I went through so many songs today to try to pick the right song. So, I sit and I uh, go shuffle through my iTunes and I try to uh, pick the right song to sing. You know, people wonder why I sing the same songs every day. Well, the problem is, I don't know who's problematic or not. You know, like... <laughs> I had a perfectly fine song picked out for today, but I didn't know if Patty Loveless was problematic or not. <laughs> Country music diva Patty Loveless. I didn't know if she was problematic. And then I was gonna sing crazy. I'm crazy for, but you know, by uh, Patsy Klein. But I didn't know if Patsy Klein was problematic, you know? I don't think she is, you know, like in the movie U-Turn when Claire Dane says, why doesn't Patsy Klein make no more records? I mean, she's gone. She's gone, which is sad, right? But I have to tell you one of my favorite movies of life, it, well, two of my favorite movies of life, okay, which both have Patsy Klein in them. Well, not the real Patsy Klein, but actresses playing Patsy Klein. My number two favorite movie, okay, of country music all-stars is Coal Miner's Daughter, okay, <laughs> with Sissy Spacek. I love that movie so much. But Beverly D'Angelo, she plays Patsy Cline in that movie. And one of my favorite scenes of life, okay, is when uh, Sissy, Loretta Lynn, she gets pregnant again. And Beverly D'Angelo, Patsy Cline, she says to her, she says, um, we have to go, we have to go get clothes for the baby because, you know, Sissy Spacek, Loretta Lynn, she's been, you know, pregnant like 42 times or something like that. Anyway, and she says, um, what we can't, what we can't buy, we'll steal. What we can't steal, we'll make. And it's like one of my favorite lines in the entire movie. And at the very end when Patsy Cline dies, you know, and it's real sad and they hear it on the radio and let her run. Well, it's not at the very end of Coal Miner's Daughter. That's at the very end of Sweet Dreams because, I mean, that's <laughs> the end of Patsy Cline's Sweet Dreams, sadly, I know. But anyway, at the very end of Coal Miner's if you've, if you've watched these movies as much as me, you know what I'm talking about, okay? But at the very end of Coal Miner's Daughter, well, not the very end, like I said, the, towards the end of Coal Miner's daughter. Towards the end of Coal Miner's daughter is when she's on tour and she has a breakdown on stage. And somebody done pulled my hair and all that kind of stuff. Oh my god, I love that so much. When she gets off the tour bus and she's pulling that tape out and all that kind of stuff. And then she gets on stage and she has like a total breakdown and she says she wishes Patsy was there and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it's the part where they're like laying in bed, her and Boo. That's her husband, Boo. And, um, she uh, hears on the radio that Pat, they they say something like on the radio because of course who sleeps you know throughout the night with the with the country music station on twenty four hours a day apparently Loretta Lynn did but anyway and so it comes on the radio and it says sad news this morning country music legend Patsy Cline has passed away in a tragic plane accident and she's like bawling and all this kind of stuff and lose her mind because of course Patsy Cline was her best friend but. If you then go over to Sweet Dreams, crazy. I think actually that movie opens with her, with Patsy Cline. But Patsy Cline is not played by Beverly D'Angelo in the movie. But I do love Beverly D'Angelo. Is she problematic? I don't know. But anyway, Beverly D'Angelo that was also in those vacation movies and stuff like that. I love her, right? But she was not, okay, uh, uh, what's her face? Patsy Cline was not played by uh by, I, I want to say it so bad because it's my favorite movie. Well, not my favorite movie of life. I, my favorite movie of life is To Kill a Mockingbird. My second favorite movie of life is called Into the Night. It was with Jeff Goldblum and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, have you ever seen it? Okay, where she steals these jewels. She comes back over from Iran, Iran and uh, then uh, she is like on the run and all these people are trying to kill her. Uh, David Bowie's in it. It's fantastic. It's like all these cameo appearances by like, uh, not cameo like that, but you can get a cameo from me linked below. No, you pay like, I don't know how much it is, $30 or something like that. You get a private message from me. Hi. Don't feel obligated to buy my slimes, though. Just don't. Okay, don't feel like you have to buy my slimes. Buy my slimes. Don't buy my slimes. But anyway, if you've never seen the movie End of the Night, it's one of my favorite movies of life. But anyway, Sweet Dreams, okay? Patsy Cline, The Life and Times of Patsy Cline. Ed Harris plays her husband, Charlie. Charlie! In the movie. Oh, my God, I used to think he was so hot. People always, like, ask me. They're like, when you were, like, gay but not out of the closet, like, when you were in high school, like, who were your, like, crushes and stuff like that? You know? I think Ed Harris probably was one of my crushes. <laughs> 
<laughs> who played Charlie Patsy Klein's husband. But anyway, or maybe Scott Bayo. <laughs> Ed Harris or Scott Bayo. I mean, who didn't have a crush on Scott Bayo back in the day? Is he problematic? Are we not allowed to say we had a crush on him? Wasn't he in, didn't, didn't he play, was he in that Joni Loves Chachi? Wasn't that back in the day the spinoff of Happy Times or Happy, Happy Days? Oh, my mom and I used to watch that show. It was Laverne and Shirley and then Happy Days. Do y'all remember that? Oh my God, I love Laverne and Shirley so much. Is that problematic? Are you not allowed to say? Is Penny Marshall, I know she's done passed away, but is she problematic? I don't know who's problematic anymore. Patty Loveless, Penny Marshall. I don't remember the woman's name who played uh, uh, Shirley, but I always wanted to be Shirley because I thought she was prettier, you know? But anyway, then you find out later that Laverne's really the one that has all the talent and the money, even though she drank Pepsi and milk and I still don't understand why. Are you guys tracking this today at all? Or are you just here for the, the Ace Family divorce and Michaela Nagara? Well, if you're here for that, hold on, it's coming. But I gotta talk to you about Sweet Dreams, which is probably the best country music of life. Okay, do you ever like ask yourself this deep question? Like what's that movie that has Los Lobos in it? And uh, Diamond Phillips, what's his name? Lee Diamond Phillips, Luke Diamond Phillips. I can't remember what his name is. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? But it's about a country music singer, but not really a country music singer. What was that movie? Oh, now I gotta look it up. Okay, I didn't bring my right reading glasses up here, so I gotta bring my ugly ones. Lou Diamond Phillips. Okay. Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, country, uh, uh, mu music movie. <laughs> Los Lobos. Because they did all the movie music from... Are they problematic? I don't know if Los Lobos is problematic, but they did all the movie... Uh, La Bamba, La Bamba. Is La Bamba a country music movie? I don't think it is. But anyway, Sweet Dreams about the life and times of Patsy Klein. This is what kills me, right? Is that now all the children out there, okay? It, if, by children, I mean if you're under the age of 40, okay? Y'all live and die for Jessica Lange, okay? And you're like, oh, Jessica Lange, American Horror Story. I love Jessica Lange and American Horror Story too. Don't get me wrong. I think she's fantastic, Okay. But I love Jessica Lange from back in the day. Now, Jessica Lange, if you don't know, pay, played Patsy Cline fantastically in Sweet Dreams, okay? She was also in one of my favorite movies of life, okay, called Crimes of the Heart, where she comes home and she, like, takes a razor blade to her hair because she's trimming her bra blades and stuff like that. She goes out. That's when she, like, you know, met Sam Shepard, and then they started, like, dating and stuff like that, and then they lived, like, on the farm in Minnesota. <laughs> that was way before American Horror Story, Okay. That was with that movie called Blue Sky or whatever that she won an Academy Award for and all kinds of stuff. I, I love Jessica Lange. Listen, I remember her back in the day in King Kong, okay, when I was growing up as a kid. I love Jessica Lange. And if you've never seen, what's the movie with her and Robert De Niro and Juliette Lewis? It's a remake of the Cape Fear. Oh my God. Okay, y'all, you think that she can smoke in that TV show, Coven? You have never seen Jessica Lange smoke a cigarette unless you have watched the movie Cape Fear. And Robert De Niro is out on that fence on 4th of July, and she's standing in the window smoking a cigarette. I'm telling you right now, okay, Jessica Lange, y'all, you, listen, the children that love her from American Horror Story, you need to go back and watch all of her movies, because Jessica Lange is fantastic, and she is fantastic, fantastic in Sweet Dreams, okay? The, my... Favorite part, though, that is the saddest part is at the very end, okay? When the plane crashes, and that's how Patsy Cline died, was because she was in this little small plane, which to this day, okay? People are like, do you, like, I, I don't, would never get in a private jet. I don't care if Jeffree Star owned it and was flying every drama channel around the world. <laughs> As if those days are coming again. But anyway... I would not get in no private jet, okay? My husband's always like, we should get a P, what, what do the, all the, the, the youngsters call it now, the, the P, P, J, PJs? He's like, we should get a PJ. I'm like, first of all, we don't got the money for no PJ, okay? Maybe pajama set, but we ain't got no money for a private jet. Second of all, no, I'm not getting in one. And people are always like, is it because of Aaliyah? I'm like, no, it's because of Patsy Cline. I'm not getting in no plane because of Patsy Cline, okay? That's, forget it. We're not doing that. You know, or Amelia Earhart. <laughs> I mean, does everybody forget about her? What happened to her flying around the world? I'm getting in no private plane because I saw what happened to Patsy Cline and it's sad and it's tragic. And you know what her last word was? She like, they show it in the movie and if they say it in the movie, then it has to be true. Although I don't know how because there was no sound recording on the plane, but they do know that Patsy Cline's last words were, Charlie! She says that at the very end of the movie. That's the last thing that happens, okay? That if you watch the movie, you know that. She screams out for her husband, Charlie, and they had this tumultuous marriage and everything it was so sad wasn't it so much but she loved charlie she did ed harris you know but anyway so what was i talking about oh i was talking about the lyrics to a nasty by janet jackson i wasn't i don't even know how i was talking about all this but i was looking up these lyrics to janet jackson because all these people listen 
Okay, we went through Moose Gate. We don't need to. I, we don't need to go through another drama of Peter Mon. Okay, of twenty twenty four. Peter's Peter's already gone through Moose Gate. I don't. You know. You know. You have lived a life when you named your own drama. Okay, scandal. Okay, Jacqueline Hill. She didn't name Lipstick Gate. Michaela Nagara, who we're going to talk about today, she didn't name Mascara Gate. Peter Mon. He named his own drama scandal. Okay, Moose Gate twenty twenty four, because. Well, we're not going to talk about We're not going to talk about whether this is a moose or a reindeer. It's been proven it's a checkered moose. We know that now, okay? But now y'all are trying to come for me for lyrics and songs. Now, I done said that I do not ever get lyrics to songs right, okay? I, I've made jokes about it. I've shared stories about it and things like that, right? But now, I have been singing this song, Nasty, by Janet Jackson. I don't know when it came out, 1987 or something like that. I have been singing this song since the day it came out, okay? And remember listening to it on the radio. I actually can remember sitting in the back seat of my mom's friend's car. She used to drive this old Bronco. And her daughter was like three years older than me. And her daughter and her daughter's friends were talking about how they wanted to get their tips dyed blonde of their hair and things like that because they wanted to be just like Madonna and like a virgin that just came out. I remember that, okay? <laughs> yes, I have lived a life, okay? But I remember when Nasty by Janet Jackson came out. I saw the music video. Isn't it Jennifer Lopez or somebody that's sitting in a movie theater with her? Sitting in a movie show, thinking nasty thoughts. Please. Well, girl, I don't know what kind of movie theater you were sitting in, okay? But I have to tell you, on the part here, now I looked up the lyrics. Here they are right here, okay? On the part where it says... So close the door. This is the part I sang in my video yesterday, okay? So close the door if you want me to respond. Now, the next part is where Miss Janet talks about her name, okay? <laughs> so what was I? I don't know. I was born in 72, 87. I was like 15. No, it would have been younger than that. When did this song come out? Hold on a second. Nasty. I gotta look this up now. It'll drive me crazy. What year <laughs> did Janet... I love the Google. I'm, like, obsessed with the Google. Do y'all love the Google so much? I mean, back when I was growing up, we had the Encyclopedia Britannica. I wouldn't even know what section to look in to find out what your nasty came out. But it wouldn't be on there. Nasty. Uh, come out. <laughs> I just love that you can find out this information like that. 1986. Okay, so I would have been... It came out April 15th of 1986. So I wasn't even 14 years old yet. I was 13 when this came out. So, yes, that would be right, because that following summer was when my cousin Caroline took care of me because I was 14 years old, and so she drove me around to all my appointments and stuff like that. So, she would have been 17. Well, she would have been turning 17, so she would have been 16. I was 13 turning 14. She would have been 16 turning 17, okay? And we drove around listening to Jam Jackson album. Now, I have to tell you, <laughs> since 1986, okay... No, true story. Now, I know that I get lyrics wrong, and sometimes I just continue it to be funny and things like that. No, true story, I do, okay? I'm totally taking ownership over that, all right? But most times, I just don't know the lyrics to songs, right? I have seriously thought since 1986, I mean, this is the truth, okay? I have seriously thought since 1986 that the lyrics were, because prophecy is my middle name. My last name is Control. I don't know why. She's talking about close the door. Privacy makes total sense, right? I don't know why. Because people are like, well, he is the prophet of the world. They said that in the comment section yesterday. Because I got called out so hard for saying prophecy. No, true story. Since 1986, I have thought the words were. Because prophecy is my middle name. My last name is Control. No, my first name ain't Baby. It's Peter. Mr. Mon, if you're nasty. <laughs> I have thought that it was prophecy since 1986. But apparently it's privacy. I don't know how I'm going to switch over now and start singing because privacy is my middle name. Janet, you need to change them lyrics because I think prophecy sounds much better. Now, true story, I did. Okay. So, I wanted to address that because everybody was calling me out about that. The other thing I wanted to address was that I got a couple people that were saying things about the fact that my camera goes up and down and things like that. And they're like, oh, Peter needs to get a new tripod and things like that. No, here's the deal, okay? Is that y'all are sitting on the end of my bed. Okay, I've shown this before. Now I'm trying to do a little bit different today. I'm trying to get you guys settled. You're usually sitting on the end of my on top of my medicine case, okay? And I think that that's why it goes up and down. Now I don't know if it's going up and down today, but here's the deal, right? I'm trying to do a little bit better. Okay, I used to like hook a tripod on and put the tripod behind the bed and all that kind of stuff, right? But here's the deal. It is raining and snowing in Indianapolis outside right now. It is so it is so nasty. Miss <laughs> nasty. Miss Janet, if you nasty. Miss Jackson, if you nasty. It is so nasty outside, okay? 
that I went outside, my chair is soaking wet, my table is soaking wet, there's no way I can film outside, okay? It's too dark to film in the living room. I don't want to break the ring light out, okay? So, this is the best you get, okay? I guess you get the Titanic uh, camera, is what you get, going up and down, going up and down to the ocean. I don't know, okay? Is that problematic to say the Titanic? <laughs> So let me ap apologize to the Titanic community, to the Depends community, to the Meese, Mice, Moose community, <laughs> to the Deer community. Let me also apologize to the Camera community. Let me also apologize to the Patty Loveless community and the Patsy Klein and Loretta Lynn, Sissy Spacek, Jessica Lang community, <laughs> okay? Let me complain, to, look, complain that too, but let me apologize to all of those communities. I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out. So anyway, that's why my camera goes up and down. Okay, now this is the part of the video where I need to make a very serious announcement. So, I had to make a very serious decision late last night. Okay, uh, first of all, I um, finished watching The Curious Case of Natalia Grace, the second part, which is called Natalia Speaks. I finished that last night, right? And then after that, I had another show to watch. And then I watched, I think it was like four episodes, five episodes of Vanderpump Rules. So I ended up watching like eight or nine shows last night, back to back in a row. And I took a nap and all that kind of stuff. I, I ordered at Cheesecake Factory in because my husband had a late meeting last night. Oh my God. Not just cheesecake, but yes, I did get that too, ma'am. Okay, but I got so, I am like obsessed with this uh, Korean fried uh, cauliflower that they have over there. Oh my God, it's so good. It is so good. Okay, and the factory nachos with no meat. I love those as well. But anyway, um, so I, oh my God, and <laughs> the deep fried macaroni. This is why I like next week is my week to get healthy, okay? Because I love the deep fried uh, macaroni and cheese balls too that you dip in marinara. And on top of that, I got a piece of cheesecake. But I'm maintaining my way. I don't know how, but I am. So anyway, I watch all these shows, right? And it's like real late last night. And I'm like, I mean, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? And I'm starting like the Vanderpump Rules reunion, right? And I'm like, I like, I can't continue to do this. Like, I don't, like this is, I'm really, I'm really struggling with this, right? Like, I know, seriously, like I am. Like, I'm really struggling getting up and being motivated to make videos for y'all. And then, um, at the same time, keep it up with my TV watching schedule. I I'm really struggling with it, you know? Like, I have a list of weekly TV shows that I watch. I'm not even caught up on that yet. I still have three episodes of Love After Lockup and three episodes of 90 Day Fiancé to catch up on. I just found out last night, and this is really what set me over the edge, if you want to know the truth, okay? Is that I know that Traders' second season is starting, I think, tonight. And then something else comes out today. <clears throat> And then I found out, and then RuPaul's Drag Race, the new season, second episode comes out tonight. And then I found out late last night that the third and final season of La Brea, which might be the worst TV show in the entire world, but I'm completely hooked, the new episode came out this week. And so I've got to watch that. So I'm way behind catching up with my shows, and I'm like, I can't keep doing this anymore, right? Like, I'm either going to just watch TV shows all day long, or I'm going to have to give up watching TV shows and just film videos that I'm so incredibly grateful for because I love this life. And and sadly, what I've decided that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get rid of all seven of my channels because <laughs> the TV shows are just too fucking important to me. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, like literally, I could just binge watch TV shows 24 hours a day. No, like true story, I could. I could just like binge watch TV shows 24 hours a day. I'm like obsessed, okay? And all these people are, like, sending me all this bullshit, okay, about this Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And I'm like, have you watched Natalia Speaks? Okay, why are we talking about Gypsy Rose Blanchard? We need to talk about Natalia Speaks, okay? All these people are sending me stuff about the Ace family. And I'm like, okay, can we talk about Lala and James on season four of Vanderpump Rules? I mean, can we talk about that for just a second, what a hot mess that is? You know, all these people are sending me stuff about the Ace family and then breaking up and putting out statements. And I'm like, but why is Kristen still on Vanderpump Rules? It makes no sense. She doesn't work at Sir, okay? She done weaseled her way back into that friend group. She wrote a book on relationships, which is baffling to me, okay? Why do we care about these people that I talk about on this channel? We should, this should just be a Vanderpump Rules, like, unraveling the mysteries, Okay. No, I'm totally joking. I'm not getting rid of my channels. How could I? I love this so much. I feel blessed that this is my life. Um, but what I am going to say is this, is that I have extensive notes 
on the second season of The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. For those of you that don't know, the entire story occurred about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes north of me, and about five, probably two minutes from Alex's, my husband's mom, my mother-in-law, and probably five minutes from my cousin Caroline, because they both live in Westfield, which is where this whole thing happened. Alex's mom actually lives in the neighborhood where the Barnetts lived. So, uh, I, the story feels very eerily close to me, okay? But I've taken many, many notes. I will say this, okay? That if you're watching The Curious Case of Natalia Grace, um, Natalia Speaks, and you are watching the last episode and you're like, I just can't anymore, the show is too sad and whatever, do not turn it off, okay? With them shutting the cameras down. Make sure you wait the 20 to 30 seconds when they put up what happens because a bomb is dropped in the 20 or 30 seconds after they end the show, okay? And they talk about a call that production received, all right? And so the Curious Case of Natalia Grace will be continuing, and I have lots of thoughts about it. So if you guys would like to see me do that video, I'm going to probably film that video for this channel, and I'll probably do it tomorrow. And it's not going to be a deep dive investigation into, you know, all this kind of stuff about the history of Natalia Grace. There's enough channels out there that have done that. Um, all these true crime channels have done that. I think Dustin Daly just did a video yesterday. He did a lot of the history of that. I'm not going to do that. It's going to strictly just be my opinions of watching the show because I've watched this case very, very closely in the last two seasons, for the last two seasons of the show and then looked into a lot of stuff background. So if you want me to do that video, put it in the comment section below and I will do that video probably tomorrow or Sunday. Okay. So now at the 21 minute, in my, at the 21 minute mark, at the 21 minute and 38 second mark let's get into the drama shall y'all that was the drama okay i mean on what channel are you gonna get michaela nagara drama okay uh ace family drama you gotta keep up with the news you also get to hear about the history of patsy klein and Loretta lynn you also get to find out if patty loveless is problematic i still do not know is patty loveless problematic let's look it up because i because prophecy is my middle name <laughs> Is Patty, if it's, I know the first thing that's going to come up is going to say, still alive. Is Patty Loveless, it says right here, still alive. I knew that. Is Patty Loveless alive? Is Patty Loveless still performing? Is Patty Loveless still singing? Is Patty Loveless problematic? You know she's not. <laughs> Was she a country music singer or a secular country music singer? Okay. What happened to Patty Loveless? Let's find this out. Um, tragedy struck again when. Oh, she lost all these people. The sad reason why you don't see Patty Loveless these days. There's a whole YouTube video about this. Who made this YouTube video about Patty Loveless? One year ago. Oh my God. It's sitting at 719,000 views. The sad reason you don't see Patty Loveless these days from this channel called Facts Verse. Why am I not making these kind of videos? My God, this is the kind of shit that I'm interested in. Oh, because they don't get those kind of views on a regular basis. Mitzi Gaynor is 92 years old. Take a breath before you see her. Okay, that's a good video. What's this one? Somebody was never allowed back on the... She was banned on The Tonight Show. Clint, Clint Walker from Cheyenne died days before his 91st birthday. Ron Howard reveals his true feelings towards Andy Griffith. 78,000 views. This is a... This is, these are two days ago. This person's posting videos left and right. Brenda Lee is 79 years old. Take a breath before you see her. Oh my God. I need these are what Stephen Hawking really did on Epstein's Island. Lucille Ball truly hated him more than anyone. 26,000 views. Why am I not making these videos? Scandals that happen behind the scenes of Mary Poppins. I listen, I this is my new channel that I'm gonna be watching. I need to this is I need to uh <laughs> what's their most popular video? Most Dangerous Roads in the World. 46 million views. 10 things you did not know what they are. Things you did not know the use of. 10 horse breeds you will not believe exist. 24 million views. Okay, that one's too sad. Mom thinks she's having twins, but doctors quickly learn. What is she quickly learning? That she's making history? With what? With rare delivery. Is, that, is this like, is this like the uh, Inquirer? They have the Sheila Woods Friendship Club in here. 15 amazing coincidences you won't believe happened. Oh my God, 20 million views. 40 photos taken at the right moment. And they got a boogered ass picture of uh, Miley Cyrus doing something like that with her face. Kids you won't believe exist. 11 celebrities that turn their lives around. They got Macaulay Culkin's picture in there. 
Oh my god, this is the new channel for me. 12 riddles that will blow your mind. Here it is. 10 fish are in a tank. 2 drown, 4 swim away, 3 die. How many are left? I'm not that smart. That kind of shit wears me out. I can't figure it out. <laughs> No, I don't think that channel's for me. That channel's gonna make me crazy, okay? But anyway, I, that's got kind of channel I need to change my channel to. What happened to this sad... See, I knew I was on to something years ago when I wanted to make a video called The Traumatic Sad Life of Tawny Katane. If you don't know who Tawny Katane is, okay? She was in movies, movies. I think she was in... Uh, the, one of those rehab shows with Dr. Drew or whatever. And then she was on the White Snake video. I remember her whipping around her hair and all that kind of stuff. And she was on the front of that car and all that kind of stuff. Oh my God, I love Tawny Katane so much back in the day. But anyway, um, I was going to do this video about called The Sad Life of Tawny Katane. And then I was going to do like what really happened to Roseanne Barr, you know, to make her crazy if she's crazy and all that kind of stuff. I was going to do all these different videos about celebrities. Well, hell, I didn't know there was somebody sitting out there getting 24 million views on these videos about Patty Loveless. What the hell? That's the kind of way my mind works. No true story, okay? I'm like sitting around and I'm like flipping through the TV and I'm like, what the fuck happened to Ethel Merman? Is she still here? Did she pass away? <laughs> you know, I'm like sitting there, right? Like, did anything weird happen to the cast of Poseidon? Like, this is the way that my mind works. And if that's how my mind works, then I think other people out there, their mind has to work the same way. Okay, so speaking of, let's get into this drama at 26 minutes and 22 seconds. You know, when I watch the watch time on my videos, the watch time on my videos is actually rather long because my videos are so long, right? But what I realize is some people aren't even staying long enough to get to the drama because they're, they're leaving at about 36 minutes, okay? And sometimes the drama doesn't start until the 37th minute. So what that tells me is y'all don't really care about the drama, okay? You really only care about the antidotes that I shared at the beginning of the video. Ah, thank you so much. I love that. Okay, y'all are tuning out as soon as I get to the drama. Well, let's talk about this, okay? First of all, we're going to talk about this Ace Family drama since everybody wants to listen to me. Let me tell you about my interest level in the Ace Family, Austin and Catherine McBroom, okay? None. I don't care about them, okay? I don't care about them all, and I have a theory about this divorce. So, the, apparently, they're, they're parting ways, and they're getting divorced, and they did this in a very civil way. And by civil, I mean that they posted, and I got started getting sent all this kind of stuff. Actually, Swoop put up this tweet that somebody sent to me. And she said, well, I'm not interested in celebrating the end of someone's marriage. I do hope this means less cameras shoved in their children's faces to make content they could never consent to, to pay the family bills. Here's hoping. Okay, I agree with you. But anyway, so where is it at? Um, okay, so Austin McBroom puts out this picture of them looking like they're like skydiving or something or getting ready to. And he put this, they both put these long statements. That, just listen, just listen, Linda, okay? My husband and I have been in marriage counseling for so long now, you know. I, I don't know what kind of statement that I would put up. I mean, I'm so long-winded. You know, I, I when we were going through all that kind of stuff, I did say to my husband, I said, you have to promise me that if uh, we ever do break up. I mean, this is the thing. People are always like, when I do videos with my husband, they're always like, nobody answered me on that either, okay? What y'all are insinuating by saying that my husband rolls his eyes at me and things like that. I mean, we've been together 15 years. I'm not saying couples don't get divorced after 15 years. We might file for divorce tomorrow. I don't know. We might get in the worst fight we have ever had tonight and tomorrow file for divorce. I don't know. You just don't know, right? Marriage is hard. Relationships are hard. And I don't wish that on anybody, right? But it takes a lot of work, you know? That's why I'm very, very, very transparent about my husband and I being in therapy and myself being in therapy and him as well because I want couples to know because when I used to watch YouTube back in the day, and especially this is coming from a family vlogging channel, when I used to watch YouTube when I first started watching it long before I ever was, you know, making videos, I watched a lot of these gay couples because I think at that point was like at a time where maybe my husband and I at that time... I, think we were even married. It was like in our first couple of years, like we were having a lot of arguments. We weren't really getting along and things like that. And so I was looking for some like happiness within gay couples. And so I would watch these videos and these people would be like, hi, we love each other so much. We're so happy. But then like two months later, like I would say to Alex, I'd be like, these couples are so happy. And he's like, that's not real. That's for camera, right? He's like, nobody is that happy with each other 24 hours a day. <laughs> and I mean, we don't really fight anymore, but do I think that there's lulls in the moment where he's watching TikTok and I'm just laying there talking to Boo Radley? Yeah, I mean, not every moment. It's like, oh my God, we love each other 
so much. You know, kiss me again, kiss me again. No couples like that, right? And so when I got on YouTube, I wanted to be very transparent about what relationships are like and what marriages are like because I had been so fooled for so long. Comp the camera stopped. I had been, you know, fooled for so long comparing my own relationship to these seemingly amazingly happy relationships that were ending two to three months later and comparing and and feeling like something was wrong with my relationship because it wasn't like that. Now, my husband and I have gone through it. I made this very, very clear. We almost headed to divorce. If it wasn't for my husband, and he just said this in the Q&A that we did not too long ago, he said to me, standing in this bedroom, looking at me, he said, and I had almost given up at this point. I thought we just probably would get divorced. And he said to me, we're going to either go to therapy or we're over. Like, we're going to get divorced. There's, there's no two ways about it. I think at that point, I was more scared of getting divorced and, like, who am I without my husband than I was in going to therapy. But I was scared to go to therapy because I didn't know what was going to come out. I didn't know what we were going to have to deal with. I didn't know what, right? And so I was scared about it. The most powerful thing that came out about it was that in this moment, I share this a lot on my Peterism's channel, my vlog, that if if this is the kind of conversation you like, those are probably the channels for you, was that my therapist at the time in an individual session said, if you and Alex don't make it, are you going to be okay? And I was like, no, I'll be absolutely devastated. And he was like, but eventually will you be okay? And, and having this conversation for a while, I was like, yeah, I guess eventually I'll be okay. And he was like, so you don't need Alex in your life. And I was like, well, I want him. He's like, but you don't need him to survive. And I was like, no, I don't need him to survive. And he was like, so you'll eventually be okay. And I was like, yeah, he goes, so you choose to have Alex in your life and he chooses to have you, you in your life or you in his life. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, don't you think choosing to have somebody in your life is more powerful than depending and needing them? Well, at that point, for the 40 some years that I had lived on this earth, I felt that I didn't know who Peter was if I wasn't defined by the man that was standing next to me. And that was a really powerful moment, not just in our marriage, not just in our relationship, but in my life, that I realized that this whole definition of codependency and who I was was defined by my, my needing somebody else or my being with them was erased in that one moment, that I realized that the people in my life are there because I choose for them to be there, right? So that's why I've always shared so transparently about our marriage problems and things online because I wanted people to see what the real deal is, you know? Okay, but let's go in here and let's read Austin McBrooms. I mean, it's going to be one of these things like we've loved each other so much. We've decided to go our different ways. Why don't you share what y'all have done to try to save your marriage when you have kids and things like that? That's what I'm always interested in. So if they put that in there, that they've gone through extensive marriage counseling, they've decided not to make it. Okay, well, that'll I applaud to that. I mean, they have the money for it, so there's no reason why they shouldn't do that. So he said, for this new year, I'll be taking a leap of faith. I made the hardest decision of my life, the decision to close the book to my marriage. Well, I mean, there's been a lot of allegations about your marriage through the years. So, okay. We have mutually agreed to a divorce, but will remain a team when it comes to our kids. We created one of the greatest stories almost a decade together. So many memories, so many accomplishments, but every book comes to an end. Not every book, does it? I mean, not... I mean, if you're going to use the analogy of um, a marriage to a book, I don't know that I think that that's a fair, or fair analogy. I don't think that every marriage comes to an end unless somebody passes away. I've actually known quite a few marriages that have existed. I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but one of the highest rates of success in marriage is high school sweethearts. I have known a lot of people that were high school sweethearts or met right after they got out of high school at 18, 19 years old and were together through their 80s. So, no, I don't necessarily agree with that statement. And I think that that's misleading to your audience. And, and your excuse for needing to leave this marriage, whatever it is, is saying to other people that marriages don't last. When that's absolutely not true whatsoever. Um, we both understand. And now we will be writing a new book as separate authors. Okay, so now you're, now you're a poet. We both understand that holding on is believing that there is only a past and letting go is knowing that there is a future and we both are supporting each other's futures. This transition is not easy, but we both are making it as easy as it can be for our family. We will continue to be the best parents to our kids. Separations are difficult and most times messy, but you will see how we push through these difficult times as a unit and keep influencing with love and positivity. With that being said, 2024 will be life changing for me. I will be dedicated to myself, my kids, my health, my body, my mind, my spirit, and God. Thank you for everyone who has supported us through our journey and who will continue to support us moving forward. We're going to need even more of your love and strength during this time. I really, to be honest with you, could give a rat's ass about Austin McBroom or his marriage. But let's go on and hear what Catherine McBroom had to say. She put out a statement as well. 
As I start this new year, I will challenge myself in ways that I have never done before. 2024 will be my year of transformative change. And with this taking place, one of the steps in my journey is a difficult decision to leave my marriage. He's saying, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but he's saying he's leaving. She's saying she's leaving. We have oh, mutually agreed to a divorce and will part amicably. Our paths as a couple have shifted and has created challenges that are irreconcilable. Oh, she says more than he does. Our paths as a couple have shifted and has created challenges. This is interesting. What do you say about that? That are in, in, irreconci uh, irreconcilable. Do you ever remember that movie with Drew Barrymore called Irreconcilable Differences? Oh my god, that was such a good movie, wasn't it? This decision comes with a very heavy heart. As heartwarming, as heartbreaking as this is, I also feel liberated. I bet you do. I have spent the past few years prioritizing my children, honoring my commitment to my family. All the while, I seem to be losing myself and my own personal happiness. Our main priority will be to stay united as parents, and to, well, as it should be. I mean, I don't know why... Everybody needs to state this. You know, I've talked a lot in my videos about my parents did not like each other, okay? When they, I think they had mutual respect for each other, but they did not like each other. And I, my parents, I just did a video talking about this not too long. My parents co-parented me, unbelievable. We're at, unbelievably. We're at everything for every event. <clears throat> My dad called me every morning to make sure that I was up for school and every night to say goodnight. <clears throat> from the time that he left, when I was very, very young, like five or six, to the time that I graduated from high school. He was at every event that I ever had. He was at every school function, every PTA meeting, every, you know, teacher meeting, everything. My parents co-parented extremely well. You know, and if I said something bad about my dad, my mom would say, you don't speak about your father that way. And if I said something bad about my mom, my dad would say, you don't ever speak about your mother that way, right? And I'm so incredibly grateful that they were able to put their differences aside. One of the things that pisses me off so bad, and this is one thing I have had conversations with my friends about, is when people weaponize their uh, kids against their partners, okay? Do not put your kids in the middle of that. You know, and say things like, well, they'll know one day what, a, what an asshole their dad is. That is not your responsibility to let your kids know that. That's your responsibility. That's a kid's responsibility to learn that on their own, okay? I'm not talking about an abusive situation. That's a completely different story. I'm talking about one of the mill divorces where people are pissed off because it didn't go that they went the way they wanted it to. And then you weaponize your kids, okay, against your ex and things like that. So I hope that that is not what happens. I hope they do co-parent fantastically for the kids. Our main priority will be stay to stay united as parents and to continue creating a stable, happy, and loving environment for our children. Thank you all to all for my supporters for giving. Thank you all to my wait. Thank you to all of my supporters for giving me a safe space to be able to use my voice and share our love. I love you all so much and I'm beyond grateful for all the support we've received from you throughout all these years as a couple. And Austin, you're my best friend, and that will never change. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, it probably will. Um. I don't know what kind of fantasy worlds you live in. I, it's interesting to me when people always say that when they break up, they're like, and we're forever going to stay. I mean, especially on social media, when people are like, we're going to stay best friends, we're going to stay each other's lives, and then everybody watches them for like two to three months, and they continue to follow each other on Instagram, and you know, every once in a while they'll comment on something, then that kind of slowly goes away, and then after a while you look, and they're like, oh, they're not following each other on Instagram, because it's been long enough, so you, don't, you can now check, right? They don't follow each other on Instagram. They actually follow people that the other person didn't like, you know, and things like that. I, I don't know why we have to keep in this facade like we're going to always be best friends, right? You're divorced. You're, it, it's fine for you. I, I think we paint this picture in our world. And I know a lot of people, and I know when I say this in a video, people will be like, well, my ex is my best friend. Okay, well, I, okay, that's great. Congratulations to you. My perspective, in my opinion, and this is Peter Mons channel, I'm just sharing my opinion, you don't have to agree with this, right? We can all have different experiences in life, is that I don't want to be best friends with my ex, you know? When I was dating the people that I was dating in the past, they were my best friends at those times, okay? I can't continue to have that kind of relationship with them after we're broken up, okay? I have a best friend, her name's Tanya Jean, and I don't fuck her and I don't sleep with her, and she's got a husband and so do I, all right? And it's much better that way. And my husband has a best friend, and it's not somebody that he wants to be romantically involved with either. So there's no reason for me to be ex friends, best friends with my ex, okay? I think the sentiment could be, I love you. I will always love you. It didn't work out. I, I hope that I can continue to respect you. 
Austin McBroom is not the most respectable person in the entire world, you know? I wish him all the best, but I, I would be interested to know what kind of work that they did into since they banked their entire career of being a couple and being a family vlogging channel. Could you let us know what you did um, since you have monetized your relationship and your family? That's what's made your bread and butter. Could you also share with us what links you went to to try to save this marriage? Or has it been over for a long time? You know in 2024 that family vlogging channels are going to be just decimated. That you won't be making the same kind of money that you're making anymore. And so you both decided that it was time to finally go your separate ways. There was no reason to continue to keep up the act. I'm just, I'm just asking. Or could you share that you went to marriage counseling? Have they shared this in videos? Maybe they have and I didn't know. Have they for the last six months been sharing in videos and it's been really, really difficult? I don't watch them. So please let me know in the comment section below. Have they said in video? I hope they have because I think it would show sincerity, you know, that they've been in videos talking about it's been really, really tough. We're struggling. We're not happy anymore. We're going to marriage counseling. You know, the kids are struggling. We're trying to keep, you know, uh, a safe space for the kids and things like that. This is what parting ways is going to look like. This has been a really difficult decision. Have they brought their audience along for that journey as well? Actually, let me go look and see what their last video is. I'd be interested to know. Ace Family. Uh, their last video that they posted seven months ago answering all the questions. Do they have other channels as well? Join the Ace Family and subscribe. Answering all the questions nine months ago. So they don't really post. Does Austin McBroom have his own channel? Austin McBroom. I bet he probably does. It just comes up the Ace Family. So they haven't posted a video in seven months. And their last video is a picture of them as a family. Surprising. My girls for Valentine's Day ten months ago. Okay. So you guys really haven't shared really anything that's going on with your family. I don't know if they share that stuff on, on online or not. I just like transparency. You know? I just like people letting you know what's going on and all that kind of stuff. So anyway... Best of luck to Austin and Catherine McBroom. When people want to come over here and say, Peter, you're being really harsh about this. <clears throat> no, actually, I'm sharing my honest opinion about two people that I could give a rat's ass about. But since so many people sent me this receipt, and they're huge YouTubers, and I'm a YouTube drama channel, I'm commenting on it, okay? But I don't really... I'm not that invested in the Ace family. I don't really think that they're that great of people. I think over time they've proven to use their kids to make money. Um, and that's not something that I'm down with. And so I don't, you know, I wish them both the best on their journeys of being single parents. And I hope they both find happiness as human being to human being. That's how I feel. As YouTubers, as influencers, I haven't really been impressed by them through the years. Anytime I've ever seen anything with them is only when they've been caught up in drama. So, um, that's my opinion based on two people that I don't really give a shit about, honestly. <laughs> you want the truth, there's the truth. Let's talk about somebody else that I don't really give a shit about, and that's Michaela Nagara. Now, you know, here's the thing with Michaela Nagara. Michaela Nagara is probably the newest member of that. Remember, like, I used to do that drama song back in the day. I'll go, Jeffree Star, Jaclyn Hill, Manny M.U.A., Nikki Tutorials. I, that song now should just be called Predator Protectors Minus Jeffree Star, okay? But then Jeffree Star has in his own serious line of issues as well. So it's just that song is so problematic, right? Have you guys noticed little Boo Radley just sitting back here the whole time listening to his dad? He's so sweet, isn't he? He loves his Costco blanket for $4.99. It was $7.50 the first one, and the second one was on sale. He loves it so much. Don't you, Boo Radley? So anyway, we're having a fun day today because it's raining and snowing, so we're just having naps and things like that. He doesn't know he's getting ready to watch about 11 hours of Fander Pump Rules. So anyway... Michaela Nagara is kind of the newest addition to the long list of beauty influencers that I love to follow because I'm very intrigued by their life and their motives. No, in all honesty, I really believe that Michaela Nagara is somebody that, this is my honest opinion of Michaela Nagara, okay? Is that, was she was working at Ulta or something like that? I don't know, if, did she work in the store that Jaclyn Hill um, would walk around and dream that one day she owned her own brand, but that she ended up wishing that she didn't own that own brand. But that Ulta never really existed in Deerfield Mall. <laughs> Let me tell you.
tell you about, uh, like, a sneaky snake, okay? Zachary Michael. Uh, Zachary Michael texted me, okay? True story. Here, I'm going to read you the text. Hold on a second. It was while I was on vacation. <laughs> Zachary Michael texted me, okay? And he said, um, hold on a second. He said, is the Woodfield Mall where Jacqueline used to work? I'm here. I'm here if you uh, need me to do any investigating. <laughs> and I said, LOL, no, I'm good. Just spend all your money. And he said, I walked past the Sephora and it dawned on me this might have been where it all started. <laughs> I don't think Jacqueline Hill even knows where it all started. But no, this is what I really think of Michaela Nagara. okay? I think Michaela Nagara. um, well... I think she might be one of the most money-hungry people I've ever witnessed on social media, period, end of story. Because it's kind of like she's never happy with what she has. We know that she's highly paid for sponsorships, which she never discloses. We are rarely discloses. We know that she's highly paid for Instagram posts, Instagram reels, TikTok, things like that. She's highly paid, okay? She makes a lot of money. All of her makeup is free and sent to her and things like that. And yet, it never seems to be enough because she can't do... Like, I think the thing that's the most mystifying to me about people like Jaclyn Hill or Toddy Westbrook or Manny MUA or Michaela Naguera and people like that, right? Are that you already make such incredible amount of money that the lack of disclosure on affiliate ads or sponsorships or whatever applies to whatever person I'm talking about, it's like... It's really, to be honest with you, it's very scammy, okay, that you're doing that to your audience and you're actually breaking the law by doing that because it violates FTC guidelines. You're breaking the law. If I told you the amount of articles that I've been sent in the last week of YouTubers and Instagrammers that were, I mean, this one person sent me this article of this woman that was fined $21 million, okay, and she's an influencer. I looked her up. I've never heard of this person before. She doesn't have anywhere near the size, okay, of a following of Jaclyn Hill, Toddy Westbrook, Manny MUA, anything like that, right? Nowhere near. She got fined $21 million for FTC non-disclosures, okay? Y'all think this isn't going to happen. This is going to happen, okay? So, it's so interesting to me. And this is where the motive is interesting to me, right? You don't disclose affiliate ads. You don't uh, disclose sponsorships and whatever. But you already are making such great amount of money. Like, why would it hurt you? These companies can be fined as well. And probably are. So, what's interesting to me is that these companies are not telling people like Michaela Nagara, don't disclose. Every sponsorship I have ever done to date, okay, in the contract that you signed, it will say they need to watch the video first to make sure that it uh, abides by FTC guidelines, okay? And every sponsorship I have ever done with every company that I have ever done a sponsorship with, they will tell you that it has to abide by FTC guidelines and most of the contracts include what the FTC guidelines are in it, okay? So do I believe that these companies on a huge level that these people work with do not care? No, I don't believe that that's true. So why these people continue to work with them is just because of the numbers. It's going to bite people like Michaela Nagara in the ass, okay? So anyway, what I think happened was Michaela Nagara was this person that was working at Ulta. She started a YouTube channel, you know, kind of basically around the same time as everybody else that started on TikTok and got famous did. And I think she was one of the very first beauty influencers to kind of blow up. I think she was very, she was like the girl you didn't expect it from, you know? And I think she had a very relatable, you know, just like talking to people and things like that. And people really liked her. And they thought, oh, this is somebody like I really like. Like Jaclyn Hill back in the day. Very relatable. Talking about just working in a store. She's kind of the American dream. Jeffree Star, the American dream. Things like that. People love that, right? People love to watch themselves on camera and be like, I'm no different than that, blah, 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 whatever. It's very relatable. It's why Jaclyn Hill continues to try to be relatable when she's not. Well, that's what got Michaela started, right? Then Michaela blew up. Then Michaela started making all this money. Don't forget, Michaela came out and said her job is so difficult. She has to take meetings sometimes after 5 o'clock. It all started going to her head. The money went to her head. The fame went to her head. It all started going to her head. Now she thinks she's better than this, okay? That's what happened to Michaela Nagara. Michaela Nagara is very much like Jaclyn Hill in this sense. I actually think Michaela Nagara is brighter than Jaclyn Hill. When you watch her speak, like... She articulates things in a much better way than, I mean, Jaclyn Hill, to some degree, and she stumbles over her words a lot when she's explaining things. She's like, you guys, I don't know. Michaela McGarrett is like very like this. Like, she, I mean, she could do like a speaking engagement like nobody's business. And if I was going to like 
problematic or not, okay, let's just put all the problematic stuff aside. If I was going to hire somebody to come speak at a convention, I would hire Michaela Nagara ten times before I would hire a Jacqueline Hill. Michaela Nagara knows how to speak, okay? And she knows how to get her point across. The other thing is she won't really back down. Jacqueline Hill kind of like uh, victimizes herself. Michaela Nagara doesn't really do that, but she won't back down either, right? So, this whole situation came out. My back is killing me right now. Be Bradley, do you care? You don't care. So, anyway, this whole situation comes out, right? And I start getting sent all this stuff about the fact that Michaela Nagara is just like Jacqueline Hill because she is... Well, basically, what I think happened was Michaela Nagara never expected this to be her life. The money went to her head, and she changed. That's what I think happened, okay? It's very simple. I think most people that followed her for a while know that. So I start getting sent all this stuff about Michaela Nagara and um, blah, 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 blah. And I'll, hold on a second. I got notes on this. <laughs> Natalia notes, okay? Hold on a second. Where is my... I thought I had a whole... I had notes about this. My Natalia notes. My Natalia notes. But she... Um, so I started getting sent all these receipts, right? From people asking me to talk about this Michaela situation and how this guy right here, okay, his name is Matthew Stevens, and he came out and he started this self-tanner, okay? Now I got it all screenshot up here. The self-tanner is called, uh, uh, hold on a second, Illusion Bronze, okay? Now, the one that explains, there's a couple out there, but this Jenna Julian, who she does self-tanning, I watched her whole thing, she breaks it down very, very well, and in her description she says, as small business owners, we can't rely on anyone for our growth, and I don't think Matthew Stevens was doing so. Because at the end of her TikTok, Michaela Nagara, when she comes out and addresses it, she, him coming out and exposing her because, okay, so this is the situation. So apparently, Michaela and Matthew Stevens have been talking. Matthew had, like, she had some of his stuff. She said that she was going to do this video where she was going to come out. And, and I'm, I'm just giving you a short down. I might be getting some of this wrong. I've watched enough TikToks now. I feel like I'm getting it right. But this is just a rundown, okay? That he was, that she was going to do some video talking about it because she apparently liked the product. She thought he was very nice. She says that and all these kinds of stuff. It was very nice, right? Okay, so he goes and orders 10,000 units of this, or $10,000 or 10,000 units of this product, the self-tanner, right? And so, because he's apparently been doing, uh, he's self-tanning people for half of his life. He says that in one of his videos, okay? Which is interesting to me because I started watching this guy and I'm like, I've watched other TikToks of him. Like, my husband watches TikToks and he sends me TikToks. I'm like, how do I know this guy? We'll get to that in just a second because that's important, okay? Because Michaela Nagara done screwed the pooch with the wrong person. That's what I think, okay? So, she said she was going to come out and she was going to do this video with uh, showing this product. He references back this video where she says she reviewed a lot of indie brands. And basically, the indie brands couldn't handle... Um, her talking about them in a video because they would, I mean, they could handle it. Obviously, they liked it, but they would sell out a product that quick. They weren't prepared for her shouting it out. Basically, what she's saying is, I'm so grand. I'm the grand dam of the internet, okay? And then if I talk about your product, it's going to sell out that quickly, which is probably true in all honesty, right? So he goes in and he orders a bunch of units, okay? Because he knows that she is getting ready to come out with um, this video talking about his self-tanner. And he's thinking that if Michaela talks about it in a video, she's talked about how she sold out other indie brands, I better be prepared. This might, and I understand from his point of view, right? He's like, this might be my moment. This might be my only moment, okay? I mean, I've talked about, I've talked about Mariah Carey and being her assistant. I've talked about being good friends with Paris Hilton and being invited to her Christmas parties. I've talked about being good duties with Britney Spears. I've talked about all these celebrities. I've talked about how I want to be in a celebrity world, how I've worked for these celebrities. I've talked about this. I've talked about that. I've been on the Trisha Payas podcast. I've literally tried everything in my, in my repertoire, okay, to get famous. So this might be my moment. Now, that was sarcasm, if you didn't know, because that's what this guy has done, okay? And this is where Michaela has screwed the pitch, because he ain't going to shut up about it. This is somebody that talks and talks and talks and talks, okay, about his celebrity interactions. Well, Michaela handed it to him on a silver platter, and he ain't going to shut up about it, okay? Because the more he talks about it, the more people feel bad about his situation, rightfully so, okay? Because there's a lot of people out there that don't like Michaela. They're going to go buy a self-tanner. In fact, 
when people are talking about it, self tanner and these things, like this Jenna Julian that I watched, she seems very good. She's like a person that does like spray tans and stuff like that. She's talking about how when you buy this the self tanner, that it, you go in and you put your hair color, your eye color, blah blah blah. It's, he's got like 125 shades, and it tells you like what exact color to use. And I'm like, oh, I want to maybe get some of that stuff, you know? Like that might be like it's so. And in that moment, I was like. <sighs> This really stinks of Michaela Nagara, okay? Like, Lashgate or Mascara Gate sold the shit out of that mascara, okay? So, is this indirectly, this drama, really trying to... Because they're going to end up making up. He, like, says he's not mad at her, whatever. It's going to be... Everything's going to be fine on their front. So, is this indirectly her really trying to do a favor for another TikToker to sell the shit out of his product? Because people are either gonna, that don't like Michaela, are gonna buy his product. It's also bringing huge exposure because, like this uh, TikToker, she says in here, she says, however, I think they both went after this. She learns to not overcommit. <laughs> Michaela Nigger never learns anything, by the way, okay? And he fought for his brand's exposure and is getting the recognition because he's getting a lot of recognition over this, okay? So here's the deal. She came out and she said that she was going to do this video. Then she kept on putting it off. She put it off. She comes out in this video and she says that she totally is in the wrong for that. She should have made the video when she said she was going to make a video, blah, blah, blah. He insinuates in some past TikTok that she had... A spray tan. He goes in and talks about heavy hands versus loose hands. Versus, I don't know about how you can tell if it's a spray tan. I didn't realize the business of spray tans was that important until I started watching Vanderpump Rules. But apparently, there is a whole world. I don't know. Spray tan. Apparently, all people, these people, all they have entire TikToks dedicated to spray tans. I did not know that. But anyway, so Michaela Nagara, she apparently didn't, she's never had a spray tan in her entire life. He goes in to try to prove that she does have a spray tan. It's a picture of her and Cody and all this kind of stuff. The whole thing is a mess, okay? Now, he's going on and on and talking about how she said she was going to come out and do this video. And this is why he bought these 10,000 units, which I totally understand, okay? That he thought this is his moment and I'm going to probably sell these products the moment that, um, that, uh, uh, what's her face? Michaela comes out and talk. What's her face? Did your mom or grandma ever said that to you back in the day? That Michaela comes out and talk about this. I'm gonna sell the hell out of these products, right? Okay. And it was a little favor that Michaela was doing for him. What Michaela says at the end of her TikTok, which is so shitty, okay, is something to the effect of what this, this person says in here. Hold on a second. That sh he can't rely on her for the success of his brand. Well, that's not what was going on here, okay? I mean, that is so arrogant and cocky for her to come out and say when she says that. I mean, but, you know, I do feel for this Matthew a little bit because here's the story, okay? Now, Amy Slayton Halterman reached out to me. She asked me if she could do a TikTok or a video on YouTube of her flipping a fan and saying beast, okay? She said I was her favorite YouTuber, okay? I've been known Amy Slayton Halterman for years now, okay? Back in the day when I used to cover her drama and she was tearing up Christmas cards on video and doing deep fried Twinkies and the whole nine yards, okay? I've been knowing Amy Slayton for years. Now, I said, okay, fine. She said, I asked her why she didn't do the video after like a week. One of her kids, I think it was Gage, tore up the fan. She's going to have to go to the Dollar Tree and she's going to have to buy a new fan. I said, Amy, I don't want you going out of your way to have to go to the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General or the Dollar Store to buy you a new Dollar fan, okay? I will send you a fan. Would, would, would that be okay? And she was like, absolutely, okay? So she sends me her address. I send her a fan. I send her one of my favorite fans, the original Alyssa Edwards Beast fan, okay? That has all the friends torn on it. Send it to her. She puts it up in her Curio case. Ain't no video made. I ain't no hard feelings again. I got no hard feelings against Amy Slate, but that video has not been made. Now, I know she is busy with the kids and her new boo and dealing with all this kind of stuff and Tammy and having to take care of Tammy and all that kind of stuff. I know how busy Amy Slate and Halterman is, okay? I watch that show. I love that show. I keep up with her, Queen Tammy, Amanda, Misty, and Chris, okay? I love that show. I know how busy she is. Girl, get your ass in a TikTok and flip the fucking fan, okay? I took time to go to the FedEx and, and send that fan to you and even get it to you in 24 hours. Girl, fill that damn video. Okay, I ain't like this Matthew Stevens and being like, well, she said, it. girl, no, I ain't gonna sit there and beg for Michaela Nagara to do no collaboration with me. If I sent Michaela Nagara a fucking fan and she said she was gonna get in the video and she was gonna say beast with it, that fucking TikTok better come out the next day after I done FedEx that fan, okay? Or fuck you, Michaela. 
I'm just joking, okay? I know people can be like, oh my god, he just told the tail again. No, but seriously, like, listen, shit happens. People get busy, okay? Y'all think I'm bitter over the fact that Amy Slayton had a film no, uh, video with my fan? Hell yes, I'm bitter about it. I want to see that video. I live for Thousand Pound Sisters, okay? B. Radley is like, what is going on? But do I understand that stuff happens and people get busy? And then life goes on and she's got 9 million non-disclosed sponsorships that Michaela Nagara has to do? I get it, girl. I get it, right? But you don't screw the pitch, okay? Because this dude right here, other than selling these products, his claim to fame is using every internet celebrity, Britney Spears, Pel Paris Hilton, Mariah Carey, he was her assistant, supposedly, and all this kind of stuff. He did spray tans for Paris Hilton. He was invited to her Halloween party. Girl, I went in and I looked, okay? He has used every name in the industry that he has ever come across to try to get famous on TikTok. And girl, I'm sorry, but you should have done your research, okay? Because now he's using you, okay? And... I don't think that what, oh my God, am I seriously at an hour? And I don't think that what you did was right. I think if you came out and you said you were gonna do the video, you should have done the video, okay? I understand you weren't gonna get paid for this video and whatever, but if you said you are gonna do it, I've done a lot of things. Most things that people have asked me to do, I've done them and never gotten paid for them, okay? So whatever, not everything that you do has a price tag on it, okay? Just do the right thing. What you should have done instead of coming out with a response about it, okay, to clean up your own mess, which is so interesting to me that she has never come out and addressed Mascara Gate, but she will come out and address a small business owner, okay, that is selling self tanner, which looks fantastic. Um, it really does. The price point's a little high. It's like $44 to $60. It's a little high, but I mean, I don't really know the amount of what the good price of self tanner is. So, I. Maybe that's not a lot. I don't know. But it looks fantastic. It really does. Like, I mean, honestly, I'm thinking about buying some of it, you know? So, I think the right thing to do, which, okay, so I want to say, this is interesting to me, that she never addresses any scandals that come out about her. She never addressed Mascara Gate, right? People are like, she can't because of the contract. Bullshit, okay? The company would have asked her to do it and come out and address it because they could have been fined by the FTC as well. And on a level like Michaela Nagara, they could have been fined a lot of money, okay? That was her choice and her choice alone. There was no company coming out and telling her not to address that. That's bullshit. There was no contract in place telling her that she couldn't disclose. On a company, wasn't it L'Oreal or something like that? On a company of that level, there is no way that there was a contract that was saying that she couldn't disclose. It, there was no way. And if that contract existed, she could expose that contract to the FTC and take L'Oreal down, okay? So that was that never happened for all those people out there that want to live in fantasy world. But don't you find it a little bit interesting that the biggest drama in the world that she was asked to address, she never came out and addressed, except for in snarky ways and making jokes about it. But the smallest drama that she's ever been included in, that she's coming out and addressing, of why she didn't make this video... That's speculative to me. That makes it almost seem to me like what she said was, girl, listen, I get caught up in so much drama. I never come out and address it. People will say I'm like Jacqueline Hill that I'm coming out with this, you know, whatever. We'll bring you a lot of exposure. I get more exposure off of my scandals than I do just doing a collaboration. We'll sell a shit ton of your product, blah, 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 whatever. I'll come out and apologize to you and whatever, and this will be like a favor, okay? Because we don't, I don't know what the relationship is. Maybe she owes him a favor, you know? Maybe she wants to hobnob with these celebrities and he can get her in. Who knows what his, his, who knows what those conversations are behind the scenes. But I don't know that I'm buying this 100%. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Do I feel bad for him that she didn't come out and make a video? Yeah. What she should have done was, she should have come out and said, this is a video I should have made two weeks ago. I apologize to Matthew or Matt or whatever he goes by for not coming out and do this video. I really believe in this product and I want to do it now. That would have been what she should have done. Okay? We didn't need to hear an excuse because now you hear an excuse and you're never going to come out and do this, this video of his tanning stuff, right? Or his tanning lotion. She should have come out and just did it. But as a drama channel that's been sitting on this side of the camera for seven years, I don't know. Something doesn't seem right about this to me, you know? And I also got a true crime book club, and I also watched The Real Housewives, okay? So, I mean, reality Von Teese. We know. See, if you watch Salt Lake City, you know, okay? So, I don't know. There's something about this that just, it, it's a little off to me, and I'm not entirely sure I believe the whole story, okay? So, anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.